Hey, welcome back to the Midday q and I'm your host, the Duck Man. First question sent in to me is, on the fastback here, how did I know the heads were loose? You know, what was the symptoms that were involved with that? And one of the things that it was doing is the head was actually rattling on the cylinders really loudly and you can hear it when it, specifically the engine was cold uh, as the engine heated up i mean within seconds it would go away but uh the colder the weather the worse it would sound and the longer it would take for it to warm up but when you get on that throttle you would hear the head brrr, and i mean it was a terrible horrible sound and about three years ago or so when it started up the fastback during a cold morning at 19 degrees fahrenheit we're in florida and it's 19 degrees out here that's cold 19 degrees so it's cold as shit. It was really bad, and that was before I knew that I had a problem, before I knew what was going on with it. Well, one of my local Volkswagen friends who's twice my age and has been doing this stuff for, you know, 40 years longer than I have, <laughs> told me that all I had to do was pull out the rockers and tighten the four bottom bolts. And he was right. As soon as I did that, the problem went away. But it didn't stay away. And the problem was you still need to tighten down those, those top bolts. And potentially I could have warped the heads, but listening to somebody, you know, that had 60 years of experience, I decided that that was probably the right thing to do. And needless to say, it only lasted about a year and a half, two years, three years, something like that, before it came loose again. And this thing, of course, had been run pretty hard since then, so I wouldn't doubt that it's run hot. So anyways, as you know, I pulled the, uh, the heads off, pulled the engine out, I tightened down the heads, I cleaned up all the tins, and repainted everything on it. And uh, people were quite pleased with the paintwork, as, as am I. I really am happy with the way that turned out. And if I get this car together, and we're going to get into that, I've actually had a million friggin' problems with this thing this week. But if I get the thing together, it'll be at a car show this weekend on Saturday. So anyway, let's go have a look at the engine compartment. All right, well, there's my engine compartment. You can see how nicely cleaned up everything is and how well it's been painted. I did receive a little bit of criticism because I did not paint the generator. But looking at it here when it's completely installed, does it look like anything is wrong to you? No, because that's actually the way they come. Uh, you'd really have to see what they look like um, when you buy one, but they look nothing like that. It's, it's, it's kind of like the metal has is, is been blued, you know, or perhaps like... Um, you typically see machine equipment do, you've seen A-bomb dip uh, all kinds of different various metals in this special sauce that puts a coating on it and then you coat it with oil to prevent it from rusting. And I think that's how these things come. Uh, of course, over time, this does get damp, it does get moist, the engine compartment is not completely uh, climate controlled, of course. So it will naturally receive a little bit of, of rusting and, of course, dirt. Any dirt that winds up in the engine compartment winds up on that, too. If you had watched a video where I pulled everything apart, you'll see just how red, rusty, and covered in filth that thing was. And now it's clean. And I think it looks spectacular. It looks just like it's supposed to, as if it were stock. I mean, sure, I could put a coat of paint on it, but it just seemed excessive to me. And of course, if I did that, then I'm going to have to paint the strap, and I'm going to have to paint everything around it that didn't get painted, because it's, it's going to stand out. It's going to look really ridiculous. So that's why that didn't get painted. And no, I don't feel bad about it. But I am extremely pleased with the, uh, the engine and the way everything went together. Yesterday, I synchronized the carburetors, and I was ready to take it for a drive, when I discovered some of the throttle linkage was actually hitting those special little plates that I made that covered up the giant gaping holes in the engine tins over the heads. And um, it's just a weird thing, the, the little, and I, I would show you, but there's no way I could get the camera in there. But to make it short, one of the push rods that comes out of the side of the, the uh, carburetor that bumps the accelerator pump, it was actually hitting the side of the plate, just like that. So when I got to about 90% throttle, it would prevent that carburetor from opening anymore unless I pushed harder, then it would cause the tins to flex. But that's gonna cause something to break. Probably my throttle cable would be the first thing to go. So anyway, I was trying to pull the uh, cover back out and I tried to find a spot where it was poking into so I could just drill a little hole so that way it had a place to clear. I couldn't find it for whatever reason, it just couldn't be found. So what I ended up doing is I ended up filing down the, uh, the bolt on the end of the carburetor instead, taking off about an eighth of an inch. And when that thing now moved, it was just coming short of the, uh, the metal plate and that completely resolved the problem. We got the throttle all retuned, I got everything set up properly. I am extremely pleased with the way that went down. But then when I put the car in reverse to go take it for a drive, I couldn't find reverse gear. And you remember, it has been a problem recently where I couldn't find first. But not finding reverse was a brand new thing. I knew that shifter was a little weird that I had, so I went ahead and tore that up yesterday. And uh, let me show you the shifter that's in there now. 
All right, you can see the T-handle shifter that I installed in here. I used to have an MP Hearst style shifter, and I really, really like the Hearst style shifter. Even the MP ones, I just like the way they look and they feel. Something happened to it when I first got it. It, it just, it wasn't right. It had been modified by the previous owner. When I put it in this car, it worked well enough, so I decided to go with it. Well, recently I was having trouble finding first gear, and you probably remember that if you watch some of the videos where I've been driving. I just, I could not find first gear sometimes. It would take a little bit of hunting and pecking until finally you got it. Well, anyways, I managed to get into it and um, got first gear to uh, work once in a while, but all of a sudden reverse couldn't be found at all, no matter how hard I was, I was trying. So I pulled the shifter out, went and looked at it. I tried to make some changes to it to modify it to figure out exactly what the hell was going on with it. Nothing seemed to work. So I ended up putting the stock shifter back in. Of course, that's not the stock shifter. But once I put the stock shifter back in, I discovered that uh, as I would shift, the shifter being that it has a bend in it, it would just all of a sudden turn sideways. And there's no reason for that. I had the pin on the bottom of it, and it has the right shaped shifter shaft, uh, shifter rod in the tunnel. It actually has a slot in it. There's no reason it should be popping back out, but it kept doing that, and it was extremely frustrating to put into third and fourth. Uh, reverse was easy to find. First was still hard to find. That was another problem, but we'll come back to that in a second. So I threw this shifter on, and when I put this shifter on, I still couldn't find first gear. So at that point, I took everything apart and started looking down inside of it. And I, I grabbed the uh, shifter shaft, runs through the full length of the car, and lifted it up and down, and it was loose. And I said, now how the hell did that happen? I just changed the bushing on it a couple years ago. So I went in there and I fished around and I managed to find the bushing up on the shift rod and it was completely destroyed. It was split down the middle, it was yellowed, it was just, it was soft and gummy, it was terrible. It was just, it was ruined, totally ruined. So the next thing was take the damn car apart, pull the shifter shaft out, put another bushing in it and reinstall the whole damn thing. And this is when it was starting to get a little late yesterday so I didn't bother to record any of this. I was getting extremely pissed off because nothing wanted to work right. The bolts to the cover plate on the front of the uh, frame horns in the front, they were seized to the chassis. I could not get them out. I ended up getting one out and then bent the plate so I could pull the shifter shaft out. I figured I could just deal with the bolt problem later. Let's get this car driving just so I can get it to the show. And the plate that's on the front isn't even original. It's just a piece of sheet metal because when I got this car, the plate was missing. Needless to say, the plate has turned up. I actually found it in a box full of junk, so I'm going to be sandblasting it, reinstalling it once I get that thing out of there. But I still need to remove that other bolt. Chances are I'm probably going to wind up either cutting it off or breaking it off and, and re-drilling and re-tapping the chassis so that way I can put it back together. But anyway, I managed to get the shifter shaft out. And then I put the damn thing back together with a brand new bushing, put the stock shifter in it. I can now find first gear, second gear, third gear, all gears, no problem. The bushing was definitely the problem for the first gear issue. But the shifter was still popping out. It was going all over the place. I put the empty shifter back in. It still had problems going into to first. It still had problems going into reverse. I mean, it was just, it was a f***ing mess. So I took that and just tossed it. Stock shifter wasn't going to be happy, so I got rid of that too. And I dropped in this T-handle shifter temporarily. I really don't like these. I think the, sh the throw on them is just entirely too short. I don't like the feel of it. I can't tell if I'm in first or if I'm in third because the, sh the throw is just so incredibly short. I mean, it's like that. That's, that's about it. Just going from left to right. It's, it's tiny. But it'll be drivable. I'll be able to get it to the show. And that's really what I was looking for as far as the goal is concerned on there. So anyways, welcome again to the Midday q and I'm your host, the Dark Man. <laughs> We're back today doing another Q&A where I'm trying to answer people's questions as best I can. And if you didn't notice already, that was my cold opening. That's right, where I start jumping into the subject immediately rather than doing all this kind of blah, blah, blah stuff about things that aren't necessarily related to what we're going to be talking about in this video. But uh, this is the cold open I've been doing over on Duckman Cycles the past two, three videos or something like that. And, and, and people have really liked those videos. I've noticed a, a pro process of a lot more views and a lot more likes. And there's been a little bit of, of people that are used to seeing me. They, they do enjoy my personality. And I told them, you know, of course, you'll get that later in the video, but, you know, they kind of miss me doing the blabber stuff up front. They just, I don't know, they, they like the opening of the video. But I think I'm probably going to be stepping with the cold open for a little while anyway, at least as long as I have something to start on before I start yakking. And I'm probably going to do a little more talking while I work on things, and uh, I'll be doing that shortly on this. Because the next thing that I ran into after I replaced that shifter shaft is when I pushed it back in, I, I hit one of the brake lines. 
and I don't know what I did. I disturbed it enough that I put a nick in it, and there's a huge puddle on the ground underneath this car, and I started to smell it. And I'm like, I don't smell gas, but I'm starting to see a puddle. What the hell is this? And as I got closer to it, I'm realizing the smell is brake fluid. So somehow I screwed up my front brake line, one of the lines that goes off to the left front wheel. Thankfully, it's, it's the shortest one. It's the easiest one to replace. So I'm probably going to deal with that later today, probably in another, another video, and get it uploaded to Duckman Cycles to get it fixed. Because at this point, I, I can't drive the car if it doesn't have brakes. But I mean, it's just this one problem after the next. I mean, unrelated things. You know, I put the engine together, everything's fine. Now the shifter screws up, you know, and then I fix the shifter and then the brakes screw up. <laughs> what? Uh, completely unrelated systems on the car, but somehow, anyway, you guys know how it is. If you've ever owned an old Volkswagen, you know exactly how it goes, where all of a sudden things just aren't what they, what they seem or you just don't get what you expect. So moving forward. Uh, yeah, I've been a little slow at videos lately and you probably noticed I've been breathing extremely heavily in them the last couple weeks. And that's because the allergies of mine are, are really bad, really bad. And you can tell up here on the pine. And I think this is what it might be. Let's see if I can get this microphone situated. I'm gonna zoom in up there. You can see the little pollen things. Yeah, see all them poof balls and shit? Yeah, they're putting all that pollen all over my yard and I'm not too happy about it. And uh, needless to say, my body doesn't react too well to it. And even though my microphone keeps falling down, <laughs> piss shit microphone, you fucking thing. All right, are we back now? Now we're back. There we go. Okay. So anyway, all that heavy breathing that I've been doing isn't because I'm some kind of telephone pervert. Hello? Hello? but rather because I actually do have an illness and that's called allergies. And I still don't know specifically what it is, but it usually happens late in the year, sometime around between September and December. This is a little odd for it to be this early in the year instead. Typically around now I don't have too many problems, but I've been just sniffling and snorting for the last few few uh, months anyway, and I really don't know what the hell my deal is there. It started in September and it really hasn't stopped. Some people suggest a nasal polyps and that kind of nonsense, but. I'm having trouble believing that because it's my eyes that are, that are burning. My eyes feel like they're on fire. And I mean, unless I have eye polyps, <laughs> it's probably not the case. But anyway, I'm feeling it right now too. It's, it's causing my voice to, to sound more mellow and less buzzy than it usually does. And uh, maybe that's worth it for whatever it counts for. All right, uh, I still need to do some painting after I got done with the paint on this with the paint on Eleanor's tins and I was hoping to do that yesterday but as I just kept running into problems with this car and the car show coming up so soon yeah it was just more important to jump on this I've already selected my paint color no I'm not gonna tell you <laughs> I'm just gonna reveal it and uh, I think I've chosen something good it's it's kind of neutral it's gonna be easy to clean and it should look nice and if it doesn't hey I can always respray it it's not particularly expensive I think I spent about nine dollars <laughs> if it looked lately like I was sick or that I hadn't gotten any sleep, yeah, you know, the deal with the allergies and the fact that I've been getting up really early for work and working really, really late on top of it. It also didn't help that I've been recording videos as early in the morning as I can, which means I'm jumping fresh out of bed, putting on a hat and a t-shirt. I'm usually not even wearing pants on some of them, since you couldn't even tell now if I'm wearing pants. But, <laughs> yeah, some of them I'm not wearing pants and you don't even know that. So, unless you manage to catch a reflection off of a mirror or something in the room, you probably wouldn't even notice. So, now you got an Easter egg to look for. You're going to watch all the older videos now, because you're going to be looking for my sausage, aren't you? <laughs> Keep searching. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, you know what? Last thing is left is my ATV jack. That's the jack that I use for pulling the engine in, right here out of the fast bag, or a beetle for that matter. It actually is for lifting up an ATV. My uncle was using it for his Harley Davidson because Harley Davidsons have the twin frame uh, that you're able to slide the um, ATV jack under. But because the jack is about this high when it's compressed, it makes all the sense in the world to use that for a Volkswagen engine lift. Um, it's even lower or flatter than Volkswagen engine lifts usually are. Uh, you too can get one of those. I'll put a link down in the video description. I'll also put one down in the comments so you can see uh, exactly exactly what I've got or exactly one like it anyway to find one for yourself. Uh, I do recommend it highly as you notice it was really easy to pull out, it was really easy to push back in and it got really flat and low to the ground. The only thing I changed is I slip a piece of plywood up underneath it because it kind of has a, 
a capital letter H yeah, like my arms so the engine really doesn't sit well on that so bridging it with a piece of plywood and putting the engine down on that makes a lot of sense so thinnest plywood you can get you don't need anything too fancy just enough to give it a support so it can't really teeter and fall down on the hull and uh that seemed to work out pretty good i've been using that for the last several years since my uncle gave it to me he gave up his harley and he says you know i have this atv jack do you want it and i said i'll take it here comes a two-stroke wonder <laughs> He was all looking at me all crazy and shit, smiling. You know he loves that thing. Hell, I would love that thing. I'd love it now even. I mean, anything two-stroke to me is cool. He was hauling ass too, probably doing about 40 miles an hour on a bicycle. That's fast. <laughs> That's fast. Anyways, thanks always for watching. Don't forget to licky likey, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle bell so you get updates every time I upload a new video. Check out duckshit.net right up here in the corner. You too can visit there and you'll find links to all my social media. I'm working on a website to put there to replace what's there now. Currently, it's just a placeholder that gets you to my Patreon and a few other things. My mailing address is also there if you'd like to mail something to me or to Skeeter. Remember, she just had a birthday. We're still accepting gifts for her birthday. You can still do so by finding the address up on that site. I'm not going to advertise the address here because it might change, but I can change it on there a whole lot easier than I can change it in the video. So anyways, thanks for watching, you guys. Really do appreciate it. Thanks to all my Patreon premium supporters. Hell, thanks to all my Patreon supporters. I mean, even the ones that give me $1. I mean, you guys really really make a big difference in my, my world and make things a whole lot easier for me. I spent a lot of you know money on this this uh, camera and computer equipment to try to make the videos better for you guys. So, you know, anything you guys can help me with, hugely appreciated, just hugely appreciated. Anyways, thank you so very much, and we'll see you guys next time.